Maybe start with your overall kind of thoughts on that, and especially how you thought the tempo of that match kind of changed at halftime with that triple substitution. Uh, yeah, it's a cup time, man. It's a hard match, you know, and uh, Halifax was obviously well prepared. They were really motivated. The crowd was great. Um, and I thought in the first half our tempo was too slow. I didn't think we, I think too many guys were getting stuck with the ball. There was too many times where the extra touches that were only getting us into trouble. Uh, and, and look, we're fortunate that in that situation we've got guys that football-wise can help those things. So that made a big difference. Um, still, it goes to the end. And, and so uh, credit to, to Halifax. Uh, Stephen does a good job, and they have a still a good group of players. Tonight was, uh, you could tell, they were ready. You mentioned it was a cup tie there. I just kind of want to get your opinion on maybe the, the difference between playing a team in the CPL and maybe playing an MLS side. Yeah, in every, every place I've been, the, when you first enter the cup and you, you play away games against teams like Halifax, uh, it's the same around the world. Those games just take on a whole different feeling, right? You, you've got to be at your best. You've got to be sharp. Um, and oftentimes, if you're just a little bit off in certain moments, the other team starts to believe and they hang in there and then the game becomes a real fight. And that's, that's what tonight is, is all about. It's, it's, it's like cup matches that I've seen in a lot of different places. Perfect. Yes, go ahead. Um, Osorio was a big uh, fundamental piece on this game today with the score, also with this United. I'm just wondering, as a, as a coach, like, you know, like he's been um, scoring two goals, that has been fundamental for the club. Uh, what's your take on that? Jonathan's a good player, you know, and, and he's had uh, some injuries lately. And when he's not in our midfield, uh, it makes it really easy for every team to just focus on Michael. Like uh, uh, Daniel's job at the beginning of the game was to follow Michael. Right? So, you know, when Oso's there, he knows. And in moments when the other team is trying to man mark Michael, Michael moves a little bit. The first pass goes to Oso. Those two have a really good understanding. Uh, and then Oso also has incredible timing to move forward and get into the box. So for us, he's, he's a really important player. Uh, you, you guys are uh, fortunately getting some guys back from injury tonight, but I know you've had a lot of injuries the last few weeks. Why is it, do you think, you've had so many of those injuries, particularly the soft tissue injuries that come up again and again? Uh, that would take about an hour to walk you through that. Um, they're all different kinds. Um, there's, there's soft tissue of guys that weren't playing that much. Um, I, we look hard at our training loads. You know, we would like to continue trying to be a team that presses a little bit more and plays at a little higher tempo. Um, and so you have to train them in those ways. Um, we got through preseason five weeks where we're, that part of the foundation was built in a very good way. There were no soft tissue injuries. Uh, and then we've had some since. Um, and, and they're all different. They're all strange. Um, you know, most of them have not been acute injuries where all of a sudden they're running and they feel something and they, you know, it's something that you know, came out of a game and something seems a little fatigued. So yeah, we look hard at all that. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, there are times when I know that other teams in the world uh, are in the process of trying to change the way they play, and then in those early days, um, maybe because the game model and training is is different, some of that takes time. So yeah, it's it's, it's stuff that we work with our performance staff and our medical staff to see if we can keep trying to uh, find. Answers and, and better ways to do things. Great, thanks for that, Seth. Just, just one quick one on Jacob. Obviously, I know he's been out for a little bit with injuries. How much did he want to 
get back for this game, and how much does it mean to him just to be able to play here? Yeah, he was really excited. Uh, I mean, Jacob is is a really good kid. You know, he's he's still growing as a professional. He's still learning every day. But I think anybody who has spent time around him knows that he's he's a lot of he's a really good guy. You know, and, and so uh, it meant a lot for him growing up around here to come and play and yeah he came on and, and helped us so I was happy for him. Thank you and now we'll go to the Zoom participants and we'll open it up to John Melanero for our final question. Thanks. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on Charlie's question just there about Jacob. Um, you know maybe you just give a more uh, more of a, an evaluation of his performance on him. But you need a really smart play. Uh, you know, when he played that ball across the box, they wanted to be also feel a second man. What did you make of where he played over the last few minutes? Yeah, he was excited. So the part that you always have from Jacob is his willingness to run, his willingness to try to uh, get on the end of a ball. And, and, you know, one of the things that he has is that when he does get down the left side, he's got a good ability to get balls across. So, you know, at that point in the game, uh, you know, we switched a little bit more to a 4-4-2 so that he could be in, in that left midfield spot. Uh, Jaden pushed out a little wider on the right, and then obviously uh, Jesus played around or underneath Io. So we thought that that was a good way to finish the game, and part of it was just we thought it put Jacob in the best possible situation to make a play like the one he made. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, that will conclude this portion okay. of the press conference. Thank, Thank you. you.